Ian got number two in the world using this 2.8 hog earthquake cycle deck. And today he's gonna teach you and I how to play this deck like a pro. Before we get to the video, ad time. This month, there is something special happening. But don't bother searching, because it's already here. The rewards are scary. The tournaments are terrifying. And there is something spooky, very spooky. A Halloween champion is coming. Oh wait, no, he's already here. But where? In Ray Shadow Legends! A jam-packed Halloween lineup is here in Raid Shadow Legends. There are a ton of bosses in Raid, like Sir Galaroth, Guardian of the Arcane Keep. He's a simple guy, like you or me, except... With the sole goal of defending the Arcane Potions with his life. Kind of intense. But you can beat him and here is how. Step number one, use AOE buffs on your team to keep them alive. His attacks deal a lot less damage this way. Easy, right? Wrong. Sir Galaroth has this minion that likes to debuff your entire team. So focus on taking out his minion first and the victory shall be yours. And if you want to get a huge start in Raid Shadow Legends, well, feel free to hit the link in the description below. And you will get the epic champion, Chinoru. Rumor has it, she's amazing in Doom Tower. Wink, wink. I gotta practice winking. And you'll get 200,000 silver, an EXP boost, an energy refill, and a partridge in a pear tree. Okay, you don't get a partridge, but you do get an ancient shard. But that's still pretty sick. All your treasure will be waiting for you here. And I will be waiting for you in the game. Are you in a game? Yeah, I'm in a game. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> oh, I, I did tell you. I thought, I thought you were... I you Did you? Like <laughs> <laughs> right, going into the first game. <laughs> so what happened so far? What I miss? Uh, basically him just spamming some mega knights and stuff at the bridge. <laughs> uh, yeah. Typical. What is this deck? Why is he playing such a weird, weird deck? I mean, honestly, I've seen some guy one before. I'm not sure if this is the same guy or if he's or what, but. Like, it, what, uh, what's the last card? Is it lightning or something? Like, what? It, it seems like it's... Uh, I think it's Zap. Oh, yeah. Oh! oh. It's a, it's a oh. firecracker. He played the Zap already. So, like, he only has two bait cards, which you don't usually see in a deck. Yeah. I I'm not gonna that... lie. To... What'd you yeah, say? Go ahead. This firecracker will actually be quite annoying. I can uh, imagine. Like, what's the optimal way to deal with it? Do you ever go with the Earthquake and the Log? Or is that just too much uh, Elixir in this matchup? I think it's usually too much unless I'm going for that. Unless I'm like wanna get tower damage really badly on mm. that lane. And like if you're trying to spell cycle already, you might as well kinda of take it. Yeah, yeah. I mean honestly it's kind of this matchup's kind of dangerous with like the bandit and the and the extra bridge spam in there. I'm gonna have to be a bit careful. Exactly, because you need your Valkyrie for it seems like the bandit, the Mega Knight, the Dark Prince, pretty much everything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, normally these decks seem like a pretty easy win at first for most cycle decks, but I, 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 I played matchups like this before and it can be a bit tricky. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing with these matchups are the fact that they can just overcommit on defense. If you go in with your Hog Rider, they can go with the Mega Knight, they can go with the Ewas, they can go with the Bandit and just mitigate all the damage, and they still have a counter push, and then they go in the opposite lane, and it's a yeah. lot. I struggle with these matchups as well, so how do you win this matchup? Uh... Tesla, Tesla cycle in the middle, if you want me, is the honest answer here. Yeah? Is Tesla still kind of broken? Honestly, it, it feels like it, because I, I had my best season yet last season after the Tesla nerf, so... I don't know if it's particularly broken, but I think it, it still works really well in the decks that it worked well in before. It's just a solid card. It's a solid card. It's definitely not as, like, before it was insane just because, like, I saw people get three Teslas on the field before, and it's like, yeah, this is, oh, this is yeah. it's time to stop. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
it's a bit more balanced now, but it's still it's still it's still like decent against stuff like balloons and things. It still gets it's not quite as good, but it gets the job done still, you know. Exactly, and it's just very versatile. Like it one shots minions, a lot of low key really good interactions. And whoa, this is getting stressful. Yeah. Focus on this defense and don't even worry about talking. Never mind. That Valkyrie and Tesla <laughs> locked down. What? Uh, Why was that so easy? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Valk is, sometimes it's really nice to have Valk over and I because it just, just deals with that type of stuff really nicely. Yeah, and it seems like it's a little bit ver more versatile, where like, I guess at top ladder you play more against like set meta decks, but in early ladder, the Valkyrie seems like it gets a little bit more value in every matchup. That's why I recommend it over the yeah. night, especially in this deck. Yeah, and, and honestly, you can, you, can, you can still beat stuff like like hard matchups like Lava, for example, even if you do it, it's a bit of a side because you still... It, you can you still have like just the same type. Yeah, and I, I see people put like Valkyrie at the bridge, and it, it secretly does a decent amount of damage. And yeah, man, Valkyrie Hog is such a such a strong combo. Ooh, I, it's it's crazy because all you did in that matchup, I think I could summarize it real quick, and it is just yeah. defense, 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 yeah. defense, little bits of damage, but just defense. Is that what this deck's about? I mean, in a matchup like this where you know you can defend pretty well, you just kind of you just kind of want to sit back and and play those tesla's in the middle. You don't want to get over aggressive with the hog giving them like mega knight value or anything. Okay, so if you have a chance, it's not a matchup where if you have hog, you play hog. Sometimes focus on defense is more yeah. better. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, a lot like in a lot of matchups, like especially like bridge spam decks, you can't, you really just want to play those tesla's in the middle because you don't want to give them like they want them like a free ram rider or something. You just want to you just want to sit back, relax, and and take the value that you can with with a hog rider if they overcommit or like some eqs on the tower occasionally. Uh, little things like that, like I would never like it would have taken me two hundred matches to learn like oh this is what I'm doing wrong. It's a great tip. Pompeo's streaming right now, so we're like, oh and he's using his yeah. level twelve. All right, we gotta destroy him. Uh, honestly, this is this is a dicey matchup. The it's a bit easier when you have Ice Spirit in there, so you can kind of stall the balloon. But this could be a bit tougher. Yeah, tough. I I can imagine. And Pompeo's tricky. Where it, there's a lot of matchups. Like anybody else playing balloon right now, I would say it's a lower tier win condition, especially if it's not paired with the the Lava Hound. But Pompeo yeah. figures out a way to get it on a tower pretty consistently. I don't know how he does it. I don't know if yeah. he brainwashes you. It's it's pretty incredible. <laughs> yeah, he's he beats e giant. He beats all sorts of stuff. Really basic. Yeah, he's got to be one of the top ladder players. Really, like, as like if I'm looking at aggregate over the years, he's got to be up there I, right now. Who do you think the best ladder player is? Uh, hmm, that's really that's really interesting because I know there's there's a good amount of ladder players doing well right now, but. But it seems like it seems like a lot of them just do well one season. They just completely fall out the next. So it's kind of it's hard, hard to, to say. Um, honestly, a soft. I don't know if you know a soft. He's a he's the guy that was usually playing minor minor wall breakers or drill, and he's actually. I think he has like four top tens in a row right now. So he hasn't gotten like a number one or something. But he's really consistent. Is it A S A F? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought his name was Asef. My bad. <laughs> yeah. To I mean, to be honest, gotcha. No, he's really good. He should have won last season, but I can't remember what, or two seasons ago. And like, he would just, I can't remember. Yeah. He lost the last game. Something happened and uh, the rest is history. It's uh, stressful when it gets to those last games. They're fun to watch though. Yeah. I mean, honestly, for, for me, it doesn't actually feel that stressful. It feels a, a lot more stressful in something like CR. But... Yeah, I think I think for some people it can be pretty stressful at the end of this season. It's not stressful. The end of the season, going for a number one finish isn't. Like, so what? You, I, I guess for part of the reason why you're on this channel right now is because I you got number two last season. Are you saying you weren't stressful at all? Because I watched a lot of your last games uh, and honestly, not really. I was I wasn't really very stressed at all. I was I just tried to stay calm. Interesting. What, what's your tactic? Yoga? A little bit of uh, meditation? <laughs> I mean, hmm, it's kind of hard to say, honestly. I just do my thing and I work well usually, so... Wow, this yeah. balloon gets on. What a wiggler. It just wiggles. Yeah. Man, honestly, it would be a lot nicer with Ice Spirit in there to, mm -hmm. um, to just stall that wound, but man...
And even on defense, like the hog, yeah, it gets a couple shots, but one balloon. Now we're in the pressure cooker. And this is what he does. He does a really good job of just using these ice golems and this mega minion push. Like it's a that's a scary yeah. push. It cleans up everything, and this balloon just wiggles in. He does it every time. Yeah. Like, Pompeo is a wizard in these matchups. Yeah. Yeah, man. He's put he definitely played this well. Uh hmm. I don't even know what you could have done differently too. It's, it's one of those things where it looks like what I've gotten from Hog EQ, and it's similar to your main deck, which is Expo, but I didn't want to have Expo yeah. on this channel because I personally hate oh, Expo. Yeah. yeah, just too dirty, man. Yeah, so yeah. I thought, you know what? I was like, ah, right, let's, let's let's see the, uh, the the Hog EQ, but it seems like Hog EQ is very similar to Expo, where it's just defense, 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 yeah. and just a little bit, of, little bit of damage. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Man, honestly, if I was focusing a bit better, I could have probably had a much better chance. So it's my fault. No, I'm totally joking. <laughs> I'm totally joking. <laughs> I'm loving this. Like, I actually know every player except the first one. I guess technically the first guy was named Boss yeah. as well. Wait, I'm watching from Boss's side. Whoops. <laughs> All right, so All right. going back into this game. And I guess this is really, we're lucky because it looks like it's an exact mirror matchup. And yeah. so in a mirror matchup, what's the way to win? Because I think I know what the way to win is, but I want to hear this may be the best time to do it just because it's early in the game. Maybe yeah. this is a good time to bother you. Um, honestly, I, I like just... I, a lot of people just like to eat two sides. When it's, but I, I kind of... Personally, that, that might be one of the better ways to win, just to eat two sides, but I don't like doing it myself because it just feels good to, to play a game and just hope to win just because just you got lucky at, by having it does so i usually just like to go firecrackers opposite lane as it, as if i don't have any cer certain play to do and i kind of just wanna, okay wanna play gotcha it. and like how do you get these hog riders on because like with the teslas and they have the exact same cycle i don't know what the strategy is to out cycle you just it's use... really nice it's really nice if you can get like a test a high tesla then and then protect it what so when if they hog rider you can tesla plus skeleton so you have that high tesla alive still and it's really nice if if you can get it with a bit of health left, that way it can kill their high Tesla. Interesting. Oh, so there's like a little bit of a Tesla battle going on in this. I always look at, like, for my re like for some reason looking at it, I always look at these hogs. It's always the hog, dealing with the hogs, getting the hogs on tower. I didn't really think of the yeah. Tesla as a major resource in this matchup. Yeah, honestly, it is. It's the firecracker and the Tesla are really the, the main cards you kind of have to use very smartly. It's, it is interesting. And like in this like point, in a reset like this, like what's the play? Is it just spell cycle just because you don't have hogs going uh, through cheap cards? Honestly, I, I think I'll just, I feel like I, I caught him a bit out, out of cycle. So now now he did get back to Tesla, but I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm a, I might be able to out cycle in here soon. So, oh man, he barely managed to get that. Oof, um, he, got, he got that one last skeleton. Yeah. Oh man, that's a, that's a, Got a hit. Yeah, um, and this this is this is where it gets really really tight because now this is when all the hogs yeah. come out and double elixir, more hogs, more EQs, more Teslas, more. I personally yeah. hate it. The firecracker. It's one of my least favorite cards in Clash Royale. And, oh man. Oof! Does get that last shot even with the log pushing it back. Yeah. It's. I, I don't know how you can play this game and not be stressed. I'm not even playing it. That's a big hog hit, and he is yeah. not happy about that. Oh, yeah. I don't even know who I'm cheering for. I kind of like you both. This is a uh, boss. He's yeah. another fellow Twitch streamer. But no, I gotta be cheering. I'm on Team Ian right now. Give me an I. Give me an A. Give me an A. What's that spell? Yeah. Key? yeah. Oh, that's. Uh, oh, the Inferno Tower. The Inferno Tower. Did you call it the Inferno Tower? Wait, what happened? I thought you said Inferno Tower. I thought you made a mistake and fumbled your words. I was gonna make fun of you, like people in my comment sections do, and they call it. They want to oh, call yeah. the Mega Minion a, a Mega Knight or vice versa. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. well, this is looking pretty good here. Hey, if you want to just focus up, I can commentate. I could do this all day. This yeah. is what I do. All right, do your e best. Man. Easy Tesla up high. I like this. It seems like a clean defense. Let's log see. coming in, a little bit of spell cycle. And now it's just cycle back to another hog. Hog comes down. He's going to fend it with no Tesla. Goes Tesla up high outside oh. of the EQ. Should be fine. I don't think this hog rider should get on tower. And now, most likely, more defense from Ian. A little bit of spell cycle coming in. And right now, oh, I have drag glitch. what's that? I just had drag glitch for like five seconds where I where when I played a card it went right back into my hand. 
that's it's crazy because so many people have that and I don't yeah. have that like ever. GG. Ouch! I hit my elbow on my desk. And Anavan, what the heck is going on? <laughs> I feel like we're playing Pokemon right oh. now. We're collecting them all. Who's next? Muhammad Light? Um, Lucas? I don't know. What are, who, who, are, who are some big names that we're missing? So, yeah. Anaban playing Anaban deck? Oh, we're playing Bridge Spam. Interesting. Is this a awful matchup or okay matchup? Uh, honestly, this is really this is really Stop. interesting. But his last cards are. What? How? That was so clean. I'm, I'm gonna have to go back and watch that. <laughs> uh, the timing, I've tried that before, and it's really hard to get the timing on that fire spirit perfect. It seems like it's pretty split second. Is that correct, or am I just slow? Um, it, sometimes it feels like it really depends where the where the band is placed. Sometimes if it's like placed on the outer edge, it seems like it can be a bit more difficult. But if it's not, then it's not actually not too hard once you get the hang of it. Interesting. It, it like in little things like that are the difference between being a good hoggy Q player, like a top one thousand, and number two yeah. in the world. I saw you do that a lot of times at the end of last season, where you'd activate King Tower using the skeletons, using the firecracker, and if you or not the firecracker, yeah, actually sometimes the firecracker, but more more or less the fire spirit, and using two elixir to activate your King Tower is got to be the most efficient way in Clash Royale to ever be able to activate a King Tower, unless I guess against the firecracker. Yeah, like like, like um yeah, even against like a Mega Knight, you can just activate your King Tower with the fire spirit plus skeleton there's a there's actually a good amount of ways you can activate your king tower with this deck if you if you look take the time to look into it and that is something that like what's a way to learn that do you do you just practice with your buddies uh -huh. against that or how do you how did you learn that or just from over time uh honestly kind of over time and and there's i don't know if you ever heard of milo the great but he he kind of specializes in stuff like that and he actually even though like obviously i know like this was able to teach me a few some activations because he, he he's a professional that type of stuff and he even showed me some interesting ones like you can actually activate things like a baby dragon what you can activate it i heard baby dragon in there what was that if you use a it, right when there's like a baby dragon crossing the river if you split skeletons in the middle and you use a firecracker right in front of your king tower you can actually activate your king off of that Ugh, this is where Clash Royale really gets too stressful. Like, we're, I think we're pushing the boundaries almost too far. Of I, I remember back two, three years ago when someone kited with an yeah. ice golem. That was a big deal in competitive play. And now we're getting to the point where people are activating yeah. king towers. Ooh, getting a couple of piercing shots. It's yeah. stressing me out. This is stressing me out. Honestly, oh honestly this matchup only gets hard once you get into late double or triple elixir where they start getting those big MK pushes in the back. Not only that, the big MK pushes, but I get stressed out when they even go in both lanes. When they have the, the first off the Magic Archer. What's the best way to deal with the Magic Archer in this matchup? Because I personally get uh, I don't do well against it. Honestly, a lot of the time it's best to just just take the safe safe option of log EQing it. So because that will typically fully. So it does get a few shots off before it, before it dies, but it's still quite a safe way to, to ensure that it dies. Gotcha. So hoggy or the log EQ is is a decent way to deal with it, and the other way is just to kind of deal with everything else, and then eventually deal with it. Yeah, I mean and sometimes you can get high Tesla's off on the magic archer, but it kind of kind of just depends on on how much value it's getting, kind of in that certain moment and things like that. Gotcha. Also, I keep saying gotcha and interesting, and I already know people in the comment section are gonna be like, gotcha, interesting. <laughs> Part of the reason I'm saying that is oh. because it's freaking one in the morning right now because Ian cannot record at any other time. <laughs> well, it's one o'clock <laughs> my time. It's earlier his time. I'm east side, baby. Go east side. And yeah. yeah, so I'm a little tired. Give me a little bit of a break here. Speaking of breaks, that's oh. not a break right there. Magic Archer gets a couple of piercing oh, shots. Yeah. And Honestly? here, are you going to be able to get this Hog Rider on tower? Uh, shoot. Oh, not because of that. You would... And I just kind of this have is to watch where I struggle. Out. Yeah, I kind of just have to watch out for magic archers at this point. If I, if I can block a potential magic archer, like, honestly, a lot of the time I like blocking the magic. Thing off. Use the hog rider to block the magic archer. Yeah, so if I have like a Valkyrie down that I used on something, and I expect them to 
use a magic archer at the bridge. I like to just go with hog so that so they have to commit to it and it also blocks a potential magic archer. No, that actually, that makes a lot of sense. I'm surprised you don't have a better phone. Like you are, you were the number two best player in Clash Royale and you're using an iPhone 7. Why are your parents? You've made money playing Clash Royale, yeah. you know what? Well, they they always just tell me that I spend way too much money, even though I haven't basically spent a single dollar of my winnings from CR so far. Yeah, just dude, well, we, yeah, you should use some of that on a phone. I, I at least be good so Santa brings you a phone or something, because that is um, that would be a, that would be smart. I think that would be like a, a great like that sounds like an invest. That's like getting hockey skates for Sidney Crosby or a basketball for LeBron James. Seems like a necessity. Yeah. Speaking of necessity, uh, what is this? What, are we, what, what deck is this? I'm pretty sure it's Log Bait with Rocket. So he's using Bandit for Knight? Uh, no, I think it, it's like that one that has Snowball. Or I think Rascal as well. Oh, it's the Rascal one, but he's using Bandit instead of Prince? Um, I'm not sure, actually. There's a, there's a few different oh. variations. This is interesting. I can't really... Never so really he only has it. Princess as his air defense. He's not going Dark Goblin. Interesting. Or I guess he has Rascal Girls. Yeah. Cool. I kind of like this deck. This is this is definitely more fun to play. Wow. Misses the Fireball and the Firecracker. Yeah. I feel your pain. Oh, buddy. I feel, I've done those laughs before. It sucks. I hate the Firecracker for that exact reason. Yeah, <sighs> and that Princess did get a lot of value to it. Though. I know. That's what oh, Princess has done. They, they do that. Underrated card. Man, I wish... Oh, I actually managed to get the fire spirit there to kill the entire goblin barrel. Yeah, how? Why is that so inconsistent now? Because I, it used to, and then they changed it to fix it, but now it still happens occasionally. Why is that? I think I think it's due to like. It's due to what? It's due to what? You have to get the fire spirit to push the goblin forward just a little bit, and then the, and then it manages manages to get that perfect sentence. Okay, I, I think I got it. So yeah, you you have to play the fire spirit to push the goblin. So then it hits the goblin because it's moved up just a smidge. It allows it to hit everything in there. That's just amazing. I love the fire spirit being able to the, the fire spirit. It, it, it's cool to have every single every single spirit in Clash Rail viable. That's I guess it's yeah, also it really a cycle does. card. I mean, honestly, the the one he, the one spirit I don't see too much of is heal spirit. But honestly. I know a few people rock it in like decks like 3M or something like that. So it's not, it's not like it's not the best card right now, but it's not too bad. It does have its decks, but that's fine. Like even Executioner, like everybody's like buff Executioner, but like it's still used in some decks. Like, do you need to buff the Executioner? Jeez, wow, that was that seemed easy that game. So uh, Ian, uh, he's pretty good at Clash Royale. And if you want to watch Ian play more Clash Royale, well, you can. He's has a YouTube channel. Feel free to check it out. It's right over here. I'll see you guys in the next video. Deuces. Ian, 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 Ian.